Welcome to the Bet MGM Studio and the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Seat Geek. With the head coach, I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you with us as it is, as we like to say around here, it is Jacksonville week. And as I've started preparing for Jacksonville, I have been sort of taken by the fact that they have not turned over very much since we saw them at the end of the 2022 season. No, I mean, that's, uh, that's the team that they put together. They've added some guys through the draft. Um, but a talented roster, you know, I mean, a good defense, it's a good front, very good front, um, and then they force you to, to block them. So, you know, we know the weapons and the speed that they have on offense, but, you know, uh, right, right now it's going to be an uh, unbelievable challenge for us to prepare for these guys to improve and, and, and go down there and win. Does it make it easier to prepare, being that the personnel has not turned over as much? No, I mean, just because you know them, I mean, you have to go out and execute, you have to... You have to block them. You have to tackle in space. You have to try to, you know, confuse or disguise the quarterback as much as you can. You have to, you know, pr- try to win the pre-snap matchups and, you know, all those things that are going to be critical to, to our, uh, our success. All right, let's take a look at the Seat Geek six-pack, Mike Vrabel's six-pack of plays from the game on Sunday in Tampa. Right off the bat, a little trickery, direct snap. Well, I mean, one, it starts with everybody else blocking. You know, you see Nick Westbrook out on the edge. You see, you know, Chris Moore and Chig and, and, and Hubbard. Everybody's pushing. And, and, and I felt like, you know, maybe we could have made a cut here or, you know, blocked the corner a little bit better. But really cool 15-yard play, well-designed well and well-executed. So outstanding run by Tyson. Misdirection, yeah. you know, a little bit misdirection. And again, we got one guy. And, you know, again, that's probably the bare minimum that we could have got on that one. All right, so a 15-yard gain in the first quarter. Play number two, actually, from the first quarter as well. Really nice game up the middle to get Baker Mayfield. Yeah, and I think what you saw there was at the beginning there, Jeffrey flashing, uh, and then Tier able to overlap. You're going to see it here from the sideline. Jeff's able to to get into the pocket, force the quarterback to, to slide over. Tier does a nice job of overlapping. And, uh, you know, just continue to try to hit these guys and, and hit them hard enough to get the ball out and, and try to get the football because that's the target and, and that's the guy that we can get it off of right there with one hand on it. And so then after the sack on the very next play, the Titans get a takeaway. Roger McCrary back for the first time in three games. Well, we forced them, you know, we forced them behind the chains, you know, changed it up. You see Danico trying to get his hand up, mixed in a little zone coverage. Roger's able to... You know, go help Aziz. You know, we see him running through the middle. We got to do a better job of blocking. You know, we got to block the intended receiver. We got to stop directing traffic and, and looking back for the ball and, and go block. You know, we got five offensive linemen you know, trying to tackle us, and those are opportunities for us to, to go score. You know, and you're going to see, you know, the receiver comes back and gets involved, and, you know, there's Imani trying to block. But we, we can do a better job getting a, getting a return right here, which is, you know, great play. Uh, huge momentum, but, but let's try to go score. You want more than 17 yards. Yeah, 18. Sure. I think we caught it minus one in the end zone. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. All right. Tier Tart had a nice ball game. We've seen his sack. How about a play here in the run game? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, it's tough sledding here when you've got Tier, you know, in a shade and uh, trying to, you know, you can see him just being able to penetrate and, you know, if they're not going to double him or block down on him, you know, he's going to win that matchup every time. And I thought you know, he was much more productive and you know more along the lines of what we were looking for from from impactfulness and his disruption and was able to penetrate was able to play with his hands and shed and you know hopefully we'll get more of that this week play number five in the six pack six pack presented by seat geek is a harold landry sack late in the ball game yeah just able to, to turn the corner there and get a good get off and you know you can see him trying to, to go for the football and you know we're going to get him out i promise you we're going to keep raking at him and, and keep getting him out. Harold Landry now up to five sacks on the season. 
All right, our final play in the six-pack. Will Levis showing some real athleticism. You see the arm, and you see a nice play here by Kyle Phillips getting some blocks. There you go. One of my favorite plays from the game. This was late in the game, and, you know, our, our you know, again, it didn't look great, but what you saw were, were guys flying down the field, getting the lead block there. You get the alignment out. You get them finishing. You, you get Ruppy there finishing. You get Kyle running through the smoke. And, this is a really cool picture. We got to build on this. We have to build on this. We have to make this our hallmark here. Guys pushing piles and, and finishing and helping guys, you know, gain some yards. Yeah, Phillips did a nice job on, on a couple of runs in the ball game. Three yeah. catches, 61 yards. Yeah, and then again, I know he'd like to have the one back. We'll, we'd like to have it in a, you know, maybe take a little bit of steam off of it. But, you know, Kyle's starting to show up and, you know, be available. The, the one I think that you were referring to was Will broke contain, mm -hmm. extended outside the pocket and get threw off platform and was able to find Kyle there at the sidelines for another good game. Good stuff from the Titans in that game on Sunday in those six plays that we saw. They just want more of them this week as the team goes back to Florida to play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. When we come back, it's time to go to the Vrabel Strader and take a look. Yeah, we're going to head right over and take a look at another play. Coach will break it down for us. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by SeatGeek continues right after this. The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek from the Bet MGM studio. Mike Vrabel and the Vrabel Strader. Here we are, ready to see. Yeah, there it is. That's the, it. The Vrabel Strader, it's on TV right now. All right, we're going to show a play from late in the third quarter. It was a very interesting design on a screen to Tajay Spears and some really good efforts overall on this play. Well, again, I think when you get it, when you can keep it in third and manageable, third and four, like you mentioned. Okay, so what we start out, we've got quads. So, one, the first thing the quarterback can do is he can check back here if he likes the matchup. You know, we get a, give us an indicator. We've got the running back out here at number one. So, as you can start to see, there's Tajay. Here's the linebacker that's starting to go and adjust. Okay, what that's going to tell the quarterback is it, we think that it, we have a good idea that it's going to be man coverage of some sort with the linebacker going to track uh, the running back. At this point in time, you're going to see Will start to bring him in, kind of acting like what we would call home and, and bring him back in here and run a play or be in protection. But as it goes and it plays out, you're going to see Tajay kind of stop, get set up where you would set up behind. You see so many perimeter and bubble screens. And then Chig and Chris and Nick are doing a great job of blocking man on, blocking man on, blocking man on. And then ultimately what we are – is we're left with the, the post safety. You know, so great job here. Again, converting the third down to a first down, also giving us a good gain. But everybody's accounted for except for the, the free safety. And you can see that this thing gets started. And again, the more that we do these things, the more we're going to be able to stretch and cut and ultimately, you know, try to crease one again. The more times that we can get Tajay out there in space with guys blocking, then we, we feel like that's an advantage for us. So this is a, a design that we've seen before, but never really seen before from the Titans with the four guys like that in that way. How much of it is the design to, to get Tajay more touches? Yeah, I mean, it's just something that we feel like that's a strength of his. It's also, you know, something else that we've built off of and, and brought him back in and homed him back in to try to get whether it's a formation indicator or whatever it may be. In the final 30 seconds right here, what would it have taken for Will to choose to go to DeAndre? This there? linebacker probably back here in the middle. I think my guess is without having – So if he know, vacates then – Well, then you get a lot of space. But, you know, here's your post safety that's leaning over Hopkins. So sometimes when you, you know, feature a player on third down like we do DeAndre, you start to get the attention and then now – some things are opened up on the other side of the field. 13-yard gain. It was pretty play. Yeah, and it's it fairly easy. You know, we don't have to protect a lot, but it, it helps when you're in third and four, third and six or less. Yes, good stuff. More coming up, including the Epic Western Spotlight, a trip to Minnesota with Amani Hooker. It's next on the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Welcome back to the Mike Vrabel Show, presented by SeatGeek. Titan safety Amani Hooker never forgets where he's from. That's why he travels back to Park Center High School in Minneapolis each summer to host a football camp that is 
about more than just football. It's really about family. Not just the people you're related to, but the family you develop in high school athletics, that family that lasts a lifetime. Amani Hooker let us go back to Park Center High School with him, and the day was filled with special memories, especially the admiration that Amani has for his older brother, Quentin, who was Mr. Basketball in Minnesota in 2013 and still plays professionally overseas. We learned that Amani Hooker will always be a hero at Park Center High School, and we're sharing that day with you tonight in the Epic Western Spotlight. So when you came out here as a freshman, mm -hmm. how nervous were you? Pretty nervous because um, I was playing against guys that were my brother's grade, you know, my brother's friends. And my dad was like, all right, you know, they're, those are big boys. You're playing with some grown men, like they're seniors. But um, my freshman year, I started at corner as a freshman and played the whole year. You know, but you weren't intimidated when you came in as a rookie with us. So yeah. did it come from that experience that you had had, that you had so. some confidence from a... Right, I think it did. Um, I think being, going through what I did here and then going to the pros and playing against older guys, I think I just turned 21. So I got playing against guys that are in their 30s and 20s and <laughs> I'm just a little a kid that left early in college. So I think, I think it definitely prepared me um, and helped with my mentality. What did the camp mean to you? It meant a lot. I know that's something that if I was a kid and that happened, I would be definitely at that camp and that would be a big deal for me. So I try to give back to the same thing that you know I think I would like when, if I was a kid. Did they ask you a lot of good questions? They asked me a lot of you know the usual questions. How big is Derrick Henry? <laughs> 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 is, he, is he really fast like that? And you know just the regular stuff. But yeah, they asked they asked some great questions. Who are these people, by the way? Those right there? I think those are the hookers right there. <laughs> this, is that your parents? That's my parents right there. All right, there. listen, we got to go over and say hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've got everybody here. It's like starting all over again. <laughs> That's it. What's up, Bash? <laughs> What's up, bro? Give them, give them nuts. Get, nice give them to nuts. see you. How are give you? Give them nuts. How you doing? It's good to see you, Bash. This is Xavier right here. How you doing? What's up, bro? You doing good, man? It was the thing. It was the thing. <laughs> yeah. So we found you yeah. over here. Oh, yeah. yeah there you Looking go. good. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. it. Love so here. you grew up here. Yeah. My sister's. She's about nine years older than me. So I've been in here since I was six, five years old, running on these mats. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what's up? Yeah. How you doing? That's my child. Uh huh. Wow. Bring back any memories? Yeah. I mean, some funny <laughs> memories. Yeah, this is memories right here. This is where my, this is my brother's, he built this. We're not in Minneapolis that often, right. so we get to see the Quentin Hooker sign. All right. It's a legend right there. From what you said, though, that means as much to you as pictures of you here, right? Yeah, I mean. Because he's your hero. He's the inspiration. Like, he's the one that set the whole tone for for the whole, the whole my whole career, honestly. Our, you, our old football locker used to be downstairs, right? Right. This is a new one. It's a new one, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looking good. It's a smooth. Well, no matter where you go, how much money you make, how fancy the pros are, right. this is still really where you're from. Exactly. Not Everybody on the team, this is where you're from yeah. in a locker room like Just this. like this, yep. And a Friday night. Right, Friday night lights. And all your friends. <laughs> It's yeah, the best. You can't beat it, honestly. Yeah. Uh, you really can't. Because at, at, at the time, you're just a kid, and you're just having fun. And it's, it's a kid's game. And sometimes you forget about it being a kid's game when you get to this level. And you just got to remember, like, about where you came from and what you wanted when you were there. No, it feels great. If you got a lot of flashback feeling. Even the smell of the school, you know, brings me back to the time when I was here. And honestly, can't beat it. I mean, it's just amazing. Amani explaining as we went through the cafeteria that he could still smell the chicken sandwiches. They love chicken sandwich day. He said it wasn't exactly like a Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. But, but it was close. It was, the, it was the high point of high school. That's, that's a guy who's rooted in a lot of good stuff, Amani Hooker. It is, and you can see that the family and his parents and his brother and everything, he talked about his sister, you know, and it brought him to that high school. And, you know, he's been, been, been great here for us and, and really have enjoyed you know, getting to know him and his family and, and kind of, you know, his journey. And, you know, he's really continued to help us and he has to help us and he's got to lead us and he's got to, you know, 
He's been been playing good football. He's got to continue to, to do that. And it was, a, it was a really cool piece to see him go back and, and visit his high school. And he's still just 25 years old. He just turned 25. Feels like he's made, been here forever. you feel old, yeah. Well, but he was young when he came out. Correct. Isn't he? Yeah. You know, and so you know, he's continued to get better. He's continued to add, and you know, plays a lot of spots for us, and and, and knows a lot of a lot of our defense. Jack Mummert and also Max Walsh, great job on that piece. As for always. Many, yeah, great job on that piece for Minneapolis. Uh, really fun to see that to have a chance to go there and experience that with Amadi Hooker. We've got more of the Mike Vrabel Show coming up right after this, presented by Seat. We're in the BetMGM studio with the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Seat Geek, and it's time now for Kids Ask Coach Vrabel. The Kids Ask Coach Vrabel kid this week is Gowan. Please hit the music. Best part of the show. It is. Hi, Coach Rue. My name is Gallon, and I have a question for you. What coach inspired you to be coaching for the Tennessee Titans? Let's go, Titans. Tighten up. Tighten up, Gallon. That was when he finally brought some juice. Yeah, he was kind of getting kinda, into it yeah, a little yeah. bit. Um, had had a lot of really cool, um, you know, experiences with coaches. You know, I think my, the first coach I ever knew was my dad. You know, he was a basketball coach growing up. Um, you know, loved working. Um, you know, under, under, you know, played under Bill, Romeo Cornell, you know. I've taught, learned a lot from Luke Fickle and Bill O'Brien and Jim Haycock and just a lot of people at Ohio State. And you try to formulate all these things, um, you know, into what your style is and how you want to, you know, present to the team and how you want to teach and things that you believe in. So, you know, there, there's, no, there's no perfect answer. You know, it's about – Believing in something, and, and most importantly, getting the players to believe in in that message and that uh, in that style. So that's what we're going to continue to try to do. You were, I mean, I don't want to say you were fully formed as a coach when you got here, but you were a lot further along than any first coach, I've, first time coach I've ever been around. Why do you think that was? Well, I thought I had some some really good experiences. You know, coached uh, with an interim head coach at Ohio State through a tough year and learned a lot. Coached with Durbin Meyer for him at Ohio State for two years and, and learned a lot. You know, learned, learned May, you know, some things that I, how I want to do them and maybe how I don't want to do them. And then, you know, we, we, were, we were, had some good years in, in Houston and, and learned a lot down there. And, you know, always try to continue to, to prepare and is, you know, you're never, you know, finished. You're always trying to, to improve and, and figure out ways to, to reach players and, you know, we're, we're really trying to focus on improvement right now. That's that's critical for us. And if we can improve, we'll win. All right. We've got the Nissan Keys to Success up next. Want to hear those as the Titans prepare to go to Jacksonville. The Mike Vrabel Show continues. After this. Titans headed to Jacksonville this weekend to take on the Jaguars. It's time for Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success. Key number one, execute with better details. I'm interested to know what that means. Well, all the plays that we've shown, right? We, we get up here and we show some highlights. We go to the Bellistrator, Variable Strader, whatever we want to call it. And, and there's a design to the play, right? But there's also the, the details. And, and the details are just going to help the player execute better, right? Whether that's landmark, technique, understanding, hey, if this happens, we need to adjust to this. And again, that's their ability to bring the picture to life. If we can just fix and clean up a few details, I think we're going to have more positive plays like the ones that we showed earlier. And that's something that I keep harping on, and, and we keep coaching, and we'll keep teaching, and we'll keep explaining them, and we're going to keep getting more of them and, and execute them uh, on Sunday. Key number two is improve communication specifically where are you talking about on the field just like, on the field itself yeah like why not help the guy next to you if you know something and you have some information about the cadence or you know something that you see then communicate it like okay here's a linebacker walking in or here's a game let's try to execute that whatever it may be let's try to talk to the guy next to you to help him do his job to remind him about the quarterback's cadence and the hard count and if you hear something, you know, echo it and relay it. 
And then key number three is play complimentary football. First 20 minutes of the game in, in Tampa, you were on that. Well, we did. We just couldn't, couldn't convert there at the 41-yard line, missed a field goal, and then, you know, give up a play. So that's how close things are and taking control of the football game. We weren't able to do it. You know, we got to get back to work and find a way to do it on Sunday. Go get this one. Yeah, let's, let's go get it. We know these people. Let's go get it. Why not? Remind you that kickoff is set for 12.02 Central Time this Sunday from what is now known as Everbank Stadium again. It's a change back to the old stadium name. Titans and the Jags this Sunday from Jacksonville. From Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show.